Congratulations on Henry Cejudo being a simultaneous double weight class champ. I think that's amazing, but I don't want to talk about that right now. That'll be for a whole nother episode. Let's talk about the King of Cringe. Now, not just the King of Cringe, but what does the King of Cringe and Ronda Rousey have in common? Check it out. What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Inside Team Shorty where I give the reality, the truth, and everything behind the scenes of the sport of MMA. I apologize, I do want to say if you hear the rain, I'm in the dorms, there's an echo, I don't have a mic, I'm not a professional, but I uh, just want to let you know that, so I appreciate you just being and tolerating this video. Uh, but let's talk about the king of cringe, Henry Cejudo, I, I do want to say first and foremost congratulations again, being a double A class champ is amazingly hard to do i was able to do that in titan but being at the ufc again another step up is just at a huge huge thing a, a, another level a huge difference again you see him beat tj dillashaw and dominate him and then move up to fight marlon morris which pff, that was that fight was amazing i seriously again th this made me respect Henry Cejudo as a fighter because you watch him grow up Yes, Olympic gold medalist, <laughs> missed weight multiple times to make flyweight, finally gets into the UFC because of his accolades. It's awesome. He moves up so fast, beating some greats, and then he ends up fighting Demetrius Johnson and gets dominated. And then two years later, he comes back, and whether regardless, I believe DJ won, but regardless of what I think, he won by the split, uh, split decision, controversial or not. To be able to go from first round, getting dominated, to go all five rounds and making it that close of a fight is amazing. But one thing I've, I've always disliked about Henry Cejudo, and I get it, you know, he is a wrestler. He's an Olympic champion. That makes nothing but sense. That guy is going to wrestle, when in doubt, fight or flight mode, just in case he's going to play it safe. And honestly, I thought that's what he was going to do against TJ. I thought because he had the more accolades that he was technically the better wrestler, that he was going to do that. But he knocked him out. It's like, okay, all right, you're, you're coming into your own right now. I mean, you even watched his fight against Joseph Benavides. He didn't even want to take Benavides down. He wanted to strike. It's like, all right, I'm getting a little respect for you. But when he fought Marlon Morris, regardless of the injury, which already, if people don't know, he injured his ankle the week of the fight, which it wasn't like, oh, I sprained it, I twisted it. His ankle was like purple and black. That's why he had the ankle wraps on. I think that's amazing to be able to push through all of that because I, I know the pain of having injury during a fight, but I've gotten it during, not before leading up to it. And it's, it's, again, amazing thing, championship status. But him fighting Marlon Moraes, he didn't try to take him down. Could he have done it? Yeah, I don't I don't see why not. But why didn't he? I think he is a very prideful person, but in a, in a very positive way, he has now become an MMA fighter. He's not just a wrestler anymore. Yes, he will always have those accolades behind him, and he will always win in doubt just in case. If he needs to win, take someone down and hold him down like he did against Sergio Pettis. But... He played that one safe. This one, he wanted to prove a point. He did. And man, it, it was amazing to take all those late kicks, still keep on walking, still push forward, and still have the conditioning to become a double weight class champ. Congratulations, Henry Cejudo. But this video is not about you. This video is about the king of cringe. And the crazy thing is, I, I was watching these videos, and this was, I was actually going to make this video before he fought Mar uh, Marlon Moraes. But Let's, let's break it down. I wanted to compare him to Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey, Olympic medalist uh, in judo, did her thing, was phenomenal in MMA, undefeated, given Henry Cejudo wasn't undefeated, but coming in and fighting some greats very, very fast and moving up to the rankings like, like no one has ever before. But Ronda Rousey, let's look at her run up. She was this humble queen, amazing, amazing person. And then I, I don't know when it started to go down. I know a lot of it got to her head of, uh, you're the greatest, you're the greatest, you're the greatest, you're creating history, and that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Eventually, it is going to go to your head, but it, it went to a negative way. Yes, she beat, I um, can't remember her name, I believe it was Alexis Davis, you know, the, the headlock throw to all these punches, TKO. Then she fought Bech Cohea, and she was the proper good, bad person, because Bech Cohea was talking smack in the back, talking about her father, and it just, it was too far. There wasn't any proper promotion with this. It was, there's fight smack talk and there's smack talk that just goes above and beyond and Betch Cohea did that 
Ronda Rousey ended up being the bad girl and dominating with that. Then she fights Misha Tate in the rematch, and I don't know if she's not shaking hands. Now she's becoming a little more bad. She's becoming a little more evil, and it's like, we respect you as a champion, but now you're becoming this persona. You're becoming this opposite person of what you originally were. You used to be this role model, but now you're not as humble. You know you're the best, and there's nothing wrong with that. But out of nowhere, she started to let it get to her head, and she became just a, a different person, the person that you wouldn't want your daughters really to look up to, or hopefully not look up to, that's just me. But, but who cares about what I say, right? And then she fights Holly Holm, and Holly Holm is the preacher's daughter. She automatically is the good girl. And I because, because I believe, because Holly became the good girl, or was automatically the good girl in the fight against Ronda Rousey, Rousey became not just a bad girl, but like just the evil personification of herself. Like the dark side came out, the evil Kermit came out with the hood up and everything. It's like, now nah, you know what, I'm doing this. She didn't shake hands. She was extremely disrespectful leading up to the fight. And I don't know where she got knocked out. Now my boxing coach, George Hernandez, TBT, the broke team, back at home at Garfield Park, he likes to say, when you get cocky, that's when you get knocked out. You always have to stay humble because it doesn't matter how good you are, one shot can change this whole thing. So guys, one punch can end it on. You just never know. So always be humble. And so when you saw that fight, Ronda Rousey goes in there and she, she gets knocked out. Hell, she even called the way she was gonna get knocked out and it happened. Then she tries to come back and she's not as humble anymore, but it's not the humble fact. It's she doesn't know where to be in her head and it broke her down completely. But then you look at Cejudo. The reason why I'm comparing that, Cejudo's winning gold medal, you know, a medalist in the Olympics, just like Ronda Rousey. And it's, she, he's building all this momentum, but out of nowhere, he's talking about being a role model like Ronda Rousey used to do. Be a role model, I wanna be this, I wanna create history, I wanna do that, and that's amazing. There's nothing wrong with that. And you look at what Joseph Benavides is talking about in The Ultimate Fighter, you know, Cejudo's like, oh, you're, you're trying to, you're supposed to be a role model to the kids. And Benavides is like, dude, you're weird. Like, you're not being a role model. Yeah, you're an Olympic gold medalist. I'm not going to ever take that away from you, but you're not acting like a role model here. You're saying you want to be this, but you're trying to bully me. You're trying to pick on me on the show to get some type of hype. And in a sense, you're acting like a phony. And that slowly started to come out after that fight. After he beats DJ, I think the belt got to his head. Now he's a champ. That, again, that's amazing. Nothing wrong with that. You can you know, boast about your accomplishments. Again, amazing job, but now you're a different person. You're becoming the person you never wanted to be. But now he's being called the king of cringe. After he knocks out TJ, he's this, he's that, he's... Let's, let's, let's look at Conor McGregor. I don't like the smack talk, but man, one, it's funny, it's clever, but two, it's true. It's what Conor McGregor is, it's who he is. He's very witty, that's just naturally how he is. He's, he's not changing his persona. You never saw him go to boxing and be a different person. No, he was always that arrogant Conor McGregor. That's how he is. Kobe Covington's a little different. Kobe Covington, it seems that he puts on a WWE persona, and yeah, it might be phony, it might be fake, but honestly, it's funny, it's enjoyable. I don't like it, I, I don't, you know, but hey, he's moved up so fast because of it, and that's awesome for him, but it's a different perspective. It might be phony, but it's funny as hell and it's clever. It's something he's thought of, but Henry Cejudo, I think, is now acting, in a sense, the real him. He's becoming the king of cringe. This hype is going to his head and he's becoming this crazy person. Again, I wanted to make this video before he fought Marlon, and I honestly thought the king of cringe was going to get knocked out. If Suhuda wasn't able to get the takedown, I thought Marlon Moraes was going to get that that brutal head kick as he usually does, but he wasn't able to solidify that second round and, and moving on to it. Uh, Suhuda did his thing, and again, I'm never ever going to take that accomplishment away from him. I respected you for that fight. I respect you so much more now. I mean, as a fighter, you're amazing. But the king of cringe, I know they say any publicity is good publicity. Good, bad, doesn't matter. This one, I don't know. The king of cringe is, is and if Suhudo ever does watch this, I, you are an amazing person. You've accomplished so many things, mainly for your Latino community. Again, I am Mexican Puerto Rican. I respect you to the fullest for it, mainly being a flyweight. Again, I think you're awesome, but 
being the hero of the flyweight division, the way you're acting, that's that's not the hero we want. I don't even think that's the anti-hero. It's, it's kind of like the guy that is just, you're you're doofy from Scary Movie. It's like, oh man, that's that's not what we want. We, we Yeah, we don't care if you're not cool, but we care if you're respectable and honorable. And right now, you're not acting that way. That's why you are the king of cringe. Hey, you're you're taking that full personification in. That's awesome. Good for you. But I'm not a fan of it. And I know many others aren't either. And there's the difference between Mayweather and him. Mayweather, for example, whether you like him or not, you're going to watch his fights. The king of cringe is becoming so annoying, becoming such a nuisance that some people don't even, they don't even care. They don't even want to watch his fights. They don't want to support something that is just not entertaining for them. I get that you're trying to be entertaining magic tricks on the stage. It's good for you, but I just don't think it's you. I hope Henry Cejudo becomes the, the person he started off and really always can be the, the role model he wants to be. And I believe he can do that. And he's definitely a role model to a lot of people, wrestlers. Hell, even myself, I would love to be that good of a wrestler one day where I just dominate everyone. I want to be that good of an MMA fighter where now I'm a double A class champ in one of the biggest promotions in the world. Technically, you are the double A class champ in the biggest promotion in the world. But it's, it's a crazy thing, man. Um, I hope you do humble yourself before something bad does happen because again this sport is brutal in any little way you can be winning an entire fight and somehow some way one punch ends it all and now everyone turns on you kind of like what they did with ronda rousey and I, I really hope that does not happen to you i believe you are a great fighter i know humbly deep down you are a great person but this king of cringe thing is is way too much um that's just my thing guys what do you think about it do you see the small little comparison I brought up with Ronda Rousey? You see what I'm talking about, the Conor McGregor, Kobe Covington thing, at least that's entertaining. Conor's true. Yes, Kobe might be a little fake, but it's one, still entertaining, and two, it's got him to where he's at, but this King Cridge thing is, is more annoying. It's, it's like taking care of a child, and that's, we don't want another child to be a role model for another child. No, we want somebody older to, to be respectable, honorable, and mature. Yeah, you can tell your jokes, you can be, you know, funny and, and clever sometimes, but I guess think before you speak and, and we'll see what happens next. I'm excited to see what Henry Cejudo does next. Uh, maybe him versus Kyoji if the UFC ever wants to open up their their doors for cross-promoting, which I highly doubt. But overall, I think that would be awesome. Congrats to Kyoji for being a, a two-promotion two champion of Ryzen and Bellator. I think that is amazing. Um, and it's motivating to me because we're both in the same division. I want to you know, be a double weight class champion brave and just keep on going from there and see what happens next, you know? So guys, what do you think about the King Cringe? What do you think about my opinions on all these different topics I brought up? And yes, I will be talking about what's possibly next for Cejudo and what's next for the flyweight division. Do you believe he's the savior? I don't. But again, that's another video for another time. Guys, I appreciate the love and support. Instagram, Jose Shorty Tours. Twitter, Shorty Tours, 125. Facebook, Jose Shorty Tours MMA. And guys, TeamShorty.com, where I sell all my merchandise. 100% of the proceeds go to the kids in my gym and kids all across the nation, young adults, so I can help sponsor them and get them to achieve their goals or even get them one step closer to doing that. So I appreciate all the love and support, guys. Thank you so much. And this was another episode of Inside Team Shorty. So, 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 so.